name is Andy McKenzie, Marketing Communications Manager at SpreadX and welcome to our Football Spread Betting webinar. This short video is designed to explain more about football spread betting, specifically how to bet on a match in play. To show some examples of how different spread bets work, I'm going to place a number of live spread bets during tonight's game, which is Villarreal v Manchester City in the Champions League group phase. Spread betting is an exciting and fast-paced alternative to traditional fixed odds betting, and at SpreadX we offer both forms of betting, but as most people understand the concept of fixed odds betting, here I'll be focusing on the spreads and looking at some of the betting strategies based around our more popular markets. Now the attraction of spread betting is that, get a bet right, you can make many multiples of your stake to turn a profit. However, unlike fixed odds betting, get the bet wrong and you can also lose many multiples of your initial stake. Okay, going into this game, uh, Manchester City they're on something of a roll. They've won six from six in all competitions, scoring a massive 24 goals along the way. Villarreal, meanwhile, they've got a bit of an injury crisis with a number of key players missing. So on this basis, I'm going to buy City's supremacy at 1.1 for £20. Now, the supremacy market is our prediction of the winning margin in goals one team over another. So our quote for this game is City over Villarreal, 0.9 to 1.1. This means I need City to win by at least two goals for this bet to win. If City only win by one goal, if the game is drawn, or if Villarreal win, then this bet would lose. So to give an example of the amount of money I'm risking here, if Villarreal were to win by two goals, I would lose £62. This is minus two, minus 1.1, which equals minus 3.1, multiplied by my £20. So to look at some different markets, I'm going to sell one pound of shirt numbers at 70. Uh, then this market is based on the number of all the goal scorers' shirts added together. So our quote here is 70 to 74, which is quite high. This is due to players such as Nigel de Jong wearing 34, Yaya Torre 42, and Mario Balotelli at 45. So if no goals are scored here, this bet would make a profit of 70 pounds because it would make up a zero. However, let's say Balotelli scores a hat trick uh, and shirts make up at 135, then this bet would actually lose 65 pounds. Uh, and also before kickoff, I'm going to place two bets on player goal minutes. Now these are based on the total number of goal scoring minutes for a player. So I'm going to sell a pound of Samir Nasri's goal minutes at 13 and I'm going to buy a pound of James Milner's goal minutes at 10. So for these bets to make a profit, I need Nasri not to score or at least to only score in the ninth minute or earlier and for Milner to score at least once from the 11th minute onwards. OK, I'll place a few more bets during the game, but just for reminders, I've bought £20 of City Supremacy at 1.1, I've sold a pound of shirts at 70, sold a pound of Nasri goal minutes at 13, and I've bought a pound of Milner goal minutes at 10. OK, we're roughly about 15 minutes into the game. It's been a fairly tentative start from both sides. There's been one corner and one long-range shot from Villarreal, and that's about it. So if you look at the spread prices now, you'll notice that many have changed. For example, shirts have now ticked down to 61, 65, and this gives me the opportunity to close out by buying back one pound at 65 for a five point profit. I'll close that bet out now. So although it's only a small profit, it shows how you can take your money early if you want to, and at least we're off to a winning start. Total goals has moved down from the pre-match price of 2.7, 2.9 to 2.35, 2.55. So I'm going to go in and make a £20 buy at 2.55. Now this bet, in effect, is risking £51 as a goalless draw would mean that the market would make up a zero. So that would be a loss of £20 multiplied by 2.55. So as long as there are at least three goals scored, then this bet will start to make money. Uh, now bookings also have dropped slightly from the pre-match price of 48.52, they're now 46.50. So I'll go in and buy £2 a point at 50. Uh, this market is based on 10 points being awarded per yellow card, 25 per red card with a maximum of 35 to one player. So I need at least five yellow cards now to break even and then the bet will start making £20 for each yellow card thereafter. If there ends up being no yellow or red cards in the game and the bet is allowed to run to expiry then it will have lost £100. Um, although there has already been one corner uh, in the game, the corners quote is now down from the opening price of 10.2, 10.7 to 9.2, 9.7. So I'll place a £5 buy of corners at 9.7 in the belief that there will be uh, at least 10 corners taken in the game for this bet to start making money. Uh, in a worst case scenario, uh, this market could make up a one because there's been one corner already. If no more corners are taken in the entire game, this bet would be risking £43.50, which is 8.7 multiplied by the £5 stake. Um, total goal minutes has dropped from the pre-match price of 140 to 150. This is now 133 to 143. Now, total goal minutes can be a very volatile market as it's based on the goal scoring minutes in a game. So a nil-nil draw would make up at zero. 
However, high scoring games with lots of late goals can result in large makeups, 400 or higher. So I'm going to buy 50p a point at 143 here. This is in effect risking £71.50 should the game end goalless. Finally, time of first match goal has moved up from the pre-match quote of 35.38. This is now 47.50. This spread here is based around the minutes that our traders think the first goal will be scored in the game. So I'm going to sell £3 at 47, indicating I believe either team will score before the 47th minute. It's important to note that if no goals are scored, then this market makes up a 90 meaning this bet is risking £129. £3 multiplied by the 43 difference should the game end goalless. Note the different stake sizes for each bet placed. This is to time with the potential volatility and the risk associated with each different market. Of course, in all these cases, the risk for each bet is a worst case scenario. You can close bets out early to cut your losses should you feel they're not going your way. And we may well see some examples of that as the night goes on. So to recap, I've bought back one pound of shirts for a five point or five pound profit. I'm still running my 20 pound city supremacy buy at 1.1, the one pound sell of Nasri gold minutes at 13, and the one pound buy of Milner gold minutes at 10. And I've now opened a series of new bets, these being 20 pound buy of total goals at 2.55, two pound buy of bookings at 50, a five pound buy of corners at 9.7, 50p buy of total goal minutes at 143, and a three pound sell of first match goal at 47. Right, we're half an hour into the game now and Yaya Torre has just opened the scoring for City, quite a well taken goal actually. So as you might expect, the prices for some markets here have jumped quite a bit while other bets have now closed, uh, including the £3 sell of the first match goal. So this has been automatically closed out at 30 for a 17 point profit uh, or a £51 profit. This is 47 minus 30 multiplied by my £3 stake. You can also see that supremacy spread, that this has moved from 1.4 to 1.6. Uh, this means this bet is now winning, offers me the chance to close out early for a 0.3 profit or six pound profit should I wish to. Total goals has also moved up now. This is 2.75 to 2.95. Uh, this means this bet is also on side by 0.2 or four pounds if I wanted to close out early. And total goal minutes, this is also at 1.44 to 1.45, winning by just a point or 50p if I close now. However, I'm going to let all these bets run as we're only a third of the way into the match. Uh, I'm feeling confident that there's plenty of scope for more goals to be scored. Now, as Torre was wearing 42, the shirt spread, this has jumped quite, quite a lot to 85, 88, uh, indicating it might have been quite a wise decision to close out of the shirt's bet early, as this bet would now be 18 points or 18 pounds offside if it was still open. There's still only been one corner, uh, one corner taken. This means the quote's dropped down to 6.9 to 7.4 so far. So this bet is currently offside, uh, would result in a loss of 2.8 points or 14 pounds, should I close it now? However, I'll also let this one run. Uh, one bet that will close though is the bookings bet. Uh, now there's been two yellow cards already and the quote is now up to 62.66 so I can sell back uh, at 62 at, uh, at 62 sorry for a 12 point or 24 pound profit. Now, the beauty of spread betting is that you can bet both ways on any market you, uh, you choose. So here I'm going to show an example of how I can close out this bet for profit and immediately take out another position uh, on the bookings market. So I'm going to sell five pound. Uh, this will take the 24 pound profit and open up a new bet which is a three pound sell of bookings at 62. I now need there to be six bookings or fewer by the end of the game for this bet to be in profit. If the game degenerates into a free-for-all, let's say there were further five yellow cards and a red card, and this market makes up quite high at 95, then this bet would stand to lose 99 pounds. So to recap, I've already made five points or five pounds from the shirts bet, 17 points or 51 pounds from the first match goal bet, and 12 points or 24 pounds from the first bookings bet. Uh, I'm still running the 20 pound buy of City Supremacy at 1.1, the one pound sell of Nasri goal minutes at 13, the one pound buy of Milner goal minutes at 10, the 20 pound buy of total goals at 2.55, the £5 buy of corners at 9.7, the 50p buy of total goal minutes at 143, and now I've opened a new bet. This is a £3 sell of bookings at 62, uh, with this market currently at 20, as there have been two yellow cards so far. 
Well, the game has just reached half time now with Balotelli having stroked home a penalty seconds before the break to give City a 2 0 lead at the interval. Again, this has changed the prices somewhat, so let's have a look at how it's affected the current open bets. Well, supremacy is now City over Villarreal 2.4, 2.6, meaning I could close this bet out for a 1.3 or £26 profit should I wish to. Total goals has moved up as well, this is 3.4 to 3.6 now, meaning I could close this early as well for a 0.85 or a £17 profit. Uh, total goal minutes, this is now up to one, uh, 178, 188, giving me the opportunity to close out now for a 35 point or a £17.50 profit. Um, as neither Nasri or Milner has scored, I'm going to let both these player goal minute bets run. Uh, not all the bets are going my way, however, there has been uh, still only one corner, um, even though we've got to half time, meaning the corner quote's now down to 5.5 to 6, and there have been another three bookings since I opened uh, a new bookings bet, meaning this market is currently at 50, with the quote now up to 83.86. So I'm going to bite the bullet with a corners bet, and I'm going to close out early by selling back £5 at 5.5, and this will give me a 4.2 point or a £21 loss. Um, we'll look at the final market makeup at the end, uh, at the end of the game, see if this was a wise decision or not. Meanwhile, I'll keep the bookings bet running. Um, I could currently close by buying back £3.86 for a 24 point or £72 loss, but I'll leave this for the time being. Uh, again, we'll look at the makeup at the end of the game to see if it was a wise decision. Um, to bank some money from the bets that are currently winning, though, I'll close out the total goal minutes bet by selling back at 178 for a 35 point or a £17.50 profit. Again, we'll look at the market makeup at the end to see uh, what would have happened if we had we let the bet run. Finally, I'll open up another new bet, this time buying £2 of time of third match goal at 71. Now this indicates I think the third goal in the game will be scored from the 72nd minute onwards, or not at all, in which case the market would make up a 90. If a goal is scored in the 46th minute, uh, as soon as the side start the second half, then this bet would lose £50. It would be 46 minus 71 multiplied by my £2 stake. So to recap, from the bets closed, I've currently made five points or five pounds from the shirts bet, 17 points or 51 pounds from the first match goal bet, 12 points or 24 pounds from the first bookings bet, and 35 points or 17 pound 50 from the total goal minutes bet. And of course, I've lost 4.2 points or 21 pounds from the corners bet. Um, so let's see how we get on in the second half. Okay, we're about 15 minutes into the second half now. I'm going to take the opportunity of taking a small five point or ten pound profit from the third match goal bet by selling back two pounds at 76. I'm going to keep everything else running for the time being. There have been no more bookings so far, meaning some of the current losses on that bet are being reduced. Uh, but there have been three corners since the break, indicating it might not have been the best decision to close out of the corners bet early. But we'll come back shortly to see how things are shaping up. Yeah. Well, it's now 3-0 to City, Torre having grabbed his second of the game in the 71st minute. So if it wasn't all over at half-time in terms of who was going to win the game, it is now. But it's certainly not all over in terms of the spread bets we've got running. So just to give another cheer for the remainder of the game, I'm going to nip into the specials markets here and make a 50p buy of headed goal minutes at 11. Now this bet is risking £5.50 if there are no headed goals between now and the end of the game. However, should someone nod one home, say in the 81st minute, that would be a 70 point or a £35 winner. Um, looking at the other bets I've got open, there have currently been six bookings so far, meaning the market is now up at 60. Um, if there are no more bookings, then this bet would actually be a two point or six pound winner. However, Sergio Aguero, who has history with Villarreal from his time at Atletico Madrid, he's warming up on the touchline. If he were to come on, there's a chance things could get a bit tasty for the last 15 minutes or so. So I'm going to cut my losses here and close out by buying back at 75 for 13 points or a 39 pound loss. Uh, to soften this blow though, I'm also going to close up my supremacy bet by selling back £20 at 3.15. This is for a 2.05 or a £41 profit. Uh, with the job done, City seem to have taken their foot off the gas a little bit. I can't really see them going all out to try and win by a four-goal margin. Um, if anything, there's the chance Villarreal might nick one here to try and gain some semblance of respectability from proceedings. So the bets I'm keeping open until full-time will be the £20 buy of total goals at 2.55 and the 50p buy of headed goal minutes at 11. Uh, with the £1 sell of Nasri goal minutes at 13 and the £1 buy of Milner goal minutes at 10, more or less equaling themselves out at the moment, I'm going to let these run to conclusion to see what happens. Okay, we've reached full time. It's now all over with City winning 3-0. 
Uh, in actual fact, not a lot happened in the final 20 or so minutes. There were no more bookings, and this means that the second bookings bet would actually have made a, a marginal two point or six pound profit had I held my nerve instead of resulting in a 39 pound loss. However, there were no further corners taken, meaning only four corners were taken in total in the whole game. So perhaps vindicating the decision to close out early at half time for the price of 5.5. Um, now let's have a look at the overall P&L and compare how the in-play bets and the approach of taking profits or cutting losses early compared to what the P&L would have been if all bets had been allowed to expire naturally at the end of the game. Well, the final P&L from the 12 bets placed via the in-play format was a profit of £95. So these being the Supremacy bet, which ended up making £41, the Shirts, £1 sell at 70 the £5 profit, Nasri Gold Minutes sell, which was £13, the Milner goal minutes buy, which is a uh, £10 loss, total goals at £9 profit, booking, the first bookings bet, £24 profit, the corners bet, which lost £21, total goal minutes buy, which made £17.50, the first match goal sell, which won £51, bookings, the second bookings bet here, which lost £39, the third match goal, the, the £2 buy, which was a £10 profit, and the headed goal minutes, which was a £5.50 loss. If the bets had been allowed to run to their natural conclusion at the end of the game, the final P&L would have been a profit of £35.50. So Supremacy here would have made £38. Shirts would actually have lost £59. Nasri Goldman, it's Milner Goldman, it's would have been the same. Total goals would have been £9 profit. Uh, bookings would have been a £20 profit. Uh, the corners bet, this would actually have been a loss of £28.50. Total goal minutes would only have made £1.50. First match goal would have been the same, £51 profit. Bookings, uh, the second bookings bet would actually have made six pounds. Third match goal would have been the same. Uh, so apologies, third match goal would have been uh, flat. It would have made up the same as the the quote and headed goal minutes again a five pound fifty loss. Now hopefully this will have given you an example of how spread betting works in play, uh, a feel for the fun involved when betting on a live match, an indication of the volatility of the different markets available and also provided some betting strategies and showing how you can potentially close bets out early, either to take a profit or to cut a loss.